Hello everybody. Welcome to another exciting episode of Tim Time. So what I have here is a fresh popcorn machine. Uh, it says right, tells me right here it's Vintage Appliance Company. I wasn't able to find a lot of information out about it, but it used to work. And right now I have it plugged in and when I turn the power on and let me see when, when I go over here I'll turn the power on nothing happens you can see the front lights on the uh, I don't know if you noticed the where it says popcorn that light came on so there's a little button here right below that when I push this it should actually start the uh, the heater fan going that heats up the popcorn and causes the popcorn to pop and then land on into the glass front. So why that doesn't work, I don't know. We're going to take a look at it. I know once before I had thought about taking a look at this, but too many screws. So now I'm going to have my trusty assistant, my daughter, help me take some of the screws out of it. And uh, she wants to get it back up and running again. So we'll take a look at it from there. I think the first thing we're going to do is see how it comes apart. I'll be back. Okay, and if you have one of these at home and you think you're going to want to do the same thing, in here there's two screws. There are little thumb nuts right there. And when you take those off, the top section comes. The bottom section is just for show. In fact, I think I might have put bricks or something in there to weigh it down. But when you take, you don't screw those two screws, and like I said, they're not tight. You can see them in there. There's one on each side. <coughs> and then the whole top section will just lift right off. And there you have it. Okay, and as you see, I have my lovely assistant back there helping me. Uh, so far, we took, there's a screw that goes in the lid on this side, and you can pull it away, and it's kind of like a keeper that you can take the lid out. It's on the top, on the right-hand side. That comes out. Then there's three screws here. You can pull that out, and the glass front will pull out so we're exposed here. Our goal is to see about getting one of these sides off so we can see what what's in there and what needs to happen. So no sense of me videoing the whole thing because it's kind of boring as we decide try and figure out which screws you have to take off. But uh, I'll turn it on when we find anything exciting or get a little bit more direction. Like I said right now we're still trying to figure out what we have to take apart to get at it. There's about 10 gazillion screws in everything. Okay, basically after taking every screw you could ever imagine and even things you didn't think you could find, it looks like we're ready to get this side panel off. So what I'll show you real quick is this top panel has some wires going to it, but only for a light. So would you be so kind as to hold the top panel yes. out of the way I want to pull the, the motor out. In here is the actual heater motor. And the best, the best of my knowledge, it would run on 110 volts coming into it, and then it would have a, uh, looks, looks like possibly a full wave rectifier. There's four little diodes, and then there's some transformers. I'm not sure what, how, they're, they're underneath some glue and you can't really see anything. All I know is the uh, motor runs, well, I know that, but the motor runs on 24 volts, and uh, there's a, power supply capacitor rated 110 up here, like one of those XY caps. So I checked, I had no voltage up to it. So that made me think that the problem is in the circuit board behind the switch. And like I said, we continued on and took out every screw imaginable that we could even possibly see and some we couldn't see. And I think we're ready to pull the panel away now and see what else, what else is blocking us. What's going on? Oh, I think this um, wire. What wire? Okay. Like the charge so wire. Sorry. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to get some lighting on this and get the camera in here so you can see what we're doing. And then I'm going to have to pause well, because I'll just be standing in front of it. Okay, so inside here, where is the flashlight? It's in my pocket, I knew that. So, inside here, I don't know if that's making matters better or worse. That's a circuit board and that's attached to the uh, 
activation switch for the blower. So want to get that off next and that's probably where we're going to find our issue and where we're going to have to do some testing. The little black switch right above it, that's the on off power switch. So without further ado, we're going to go and see if we can get that circuit board out. Okay, so just poking around uh, without a schematic, I checked a couple things and it definitely seemed as though it had a short somewhere because I was getting a strange 120 volt reading just about everywhere. So one of the things I found is just kind of locked into it. <clears throat> this D9 right here, I think it's a yeah D9. It's a Zener diode, and when I ohm checked it, it showed a direct short. So I pulled it out. So I'm going to try. Uh, I'll throw another one in, and then maybe we can check it the rest of the way. This is this. Uh, if I can lift up right here, this Q1 would be the switch that turns the uh, relay on and off. And this over here, this U1, that would be a voltage regulator. I haven't looked it up yet, but I'm assuming it's a 5 volt voltage regulator, but I can check that later as well. So I'm going to throw that uh, Zener diode in and see where we're at from there. Make sure the voltage regulator is working. And hopefully it didn't fry the, the switch that actually turns on the, the relay. And then I'd imagine this this I see down here is a time where is it a timer a, you can see it Move my finger out of the way it's probably like a five 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 timer something similar to that <clears throat> so let me throw a uh, a zener in there and we'll see where we're at where we're at so before I put the zener in I'm going to check it just to make sure that it's good which way am I going here. And the Zener's testing them basically like this is just like that, testing a regular diode. And I put the red side at the cathode and the black side on the anode, I get a zero or an open limit like you see. And when I switch it around so that brought black sides on the cathode, I show about 0.7 volts, which is about what you'd see with a regular diode. So <clears throat> at least I know it works that way if I put it in shorts again. I, I know it worked beforehand. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so now the diode's in. Let me zoom in a little bit there. The diode is in. And I have not fired it up yet. So. Zoom in a little bit there so you got a pretty good view. And where's the diode? It would be right behind this black with this front wire. I'm sorry. Right here is where my fingers point. So look in that area for a spark when I, when I plug it in, and we're going to see what's going to happen. And let me turn the power supply off for the machine. I'm going to move in front of this to plug it in. Okay. Turn the power on. I didn't hear any loud pop. So before I even try anything, I want to just see if my voltages are a little bit more along the lines of where they should be. So 5 volts on that side, 7.8, alright, push the uh, run button and we're going to see what's going to happen. Seems to be running. I think it takes it takes about a five-minute cycle, so we'll go from there and find out. I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing while it runs. If something happens in the meantime, I'll shut it back on and turn the camera on. 
it's uh, it's to make sure nothing's going to burn up from the heater run. Okay, so it's back together. Just to highlight, basically every screw on this side, which is the switch side, and the ones along the top there, and the ones around the heater, these all had to come out. I'm walking the light. These all had to come out. And there's a few behind this. And to take this glass out, there's actually three screws here. Take those out and the glass will pull straight up. It's plastic, not glass. There's a couple of screws down in here. And then there's one more up underneath this thing and it'll actually pull away after you get the glass and those other screws out and you get your hand on that. Then there's three screws at the very bottom underneath there that have to come out. Once you can get this whole side away, then you can see where you can get at the switches. So, as you see, the repair itself wasn't hard, but uh, taking the screws on and off was two hours. Uh, if I ever have to do it again, I might find a way to just cut it here and make an access door. So, good luck if you're going to try this on your own. Again, like I said, easy fix. Mine ended up just being the uh, Zener diode. It was a 12-volt Zener. Uh, the hardest part was the screws. They're all pretty much the same. There's only about two different types. And the sheet metal screws are threaded, or the machine screws are threaded, and the regular plastic like sheet metal screws or the rest. So we'll uh, finish putting it all together and take a look at it. So in order to get the uh, lid off, you remove this down here. There's a little screw right inside there, you can see it. Let me see if I can get a straight on shot. Sorry for the lighting being so terrible, but we're not at the bench. Uh, remove that, that screw, and then this little plug will slide completely out and kind of cock it sideways and pull it right out. Then this side of the, uh, the lid will pop out. And then once you have that, then you can kind of rock it sideways a little bit, the lid a little bit sideways, and slip this side right out. Now be careful because the wires come out of here that go to this light right here. So. Uh, just be careful with that. You can kind of find a way to manipulate it and put it somewhere. Alright, and with the help of my lovely assistant, we're going to attempt to make some popcorn. Samantha, if you will. Okay, popcorn's in. Okay, now this takes probably about five minutes, so I'm not going to record the whole thing. We'll turn it back on when it starts popping. Thanks for watching.